Less than 100 kilometers of ocean separate Sri Lanka from the southeast coast of India. So you may think that the island would just be an extension of the mainland. That's anything but the case. And it's a place with a very individual identity. Travelers flock there for summer vacations and the local cuisine is one of the many attractions. To give you a taste of what to expect, here's some Sri Lankan inspiration. Is Sri Lankan food like Indian food? Well, sort of. There's curry and rice, but it is quite different. I had the pleasure of discovering Sri Lankan food after missing a connecting flight to Mumbai. I had just about a day to spend in Colombo, which was more than enough time for a food adventure. The food is hot and spicy, there's coconut milk, a touch of sweetness as well, which is perfect for that hot island air. It does kickstart the metabolism. I'm starting out by making some coconut bread today. That's going to go with a Sri Lankan style chicken curry and for dessert, coconut banana it's a really good surprise to find bread, really good homemade bread in Sri Lanka. This is quite an unusual recipe. It uses coconut oil instead of butter. I've got three cups of cake flour here. It goes into a mixing bowl. To that, a teaspoon and a half of salt, three teaspoons of dried yeast, sugar, milk, and warm water. Work those ingredients together. The dough comes together quite quickly and it is slightly sticky. Add three tablespoons of coconut oil. The coconut oil just adds a lovely glossy finish and flavor to this bread as well. That's ready. I'm going to use a little coconut oil on my fingertips just so the dough doesn't stick too much and loosening the dough off the hook. Don't be too alarmed if it looks like there's too much coconut oil in the dough. After about a minute or so, the flour starts to absorb the oil and you end up with a real glossy sort of dough. Cover the dough with a damp cloth and leave it to double in size. This should take about an hour. I've already made another batch of dough and here it is. As you can see, it's quite spongy, gently press that down. I love the aroma of bread baking in the oven. Even when the dough is made, you can still get that lovely aroma. Just knead that dough. You can see it's still slightly sticky. Roll that into a log and divide into 10 pieces. First down the center and each half into five. Roughly 10 pieces. Also roll each piece into a smooth ball, use a touch of flour and roll that out. Brush the bread with some coconut oil and this is my own special touch, spring onion. I've got a mixture of purple onion or red onion and you could also make this bread with coriander or just leave out the fresh herbs. Roll each piece up and then just coil it, knot it into a roll. I've got a 25 centimeter tin here. Place the rolls into the tin. It's been greased already. Let's start with the next one. And then some chopped spring onion. And coil that into a knot and that's what it should look like. This is the last one, roll that quite tightly, knot as well. This takes some practice, but it's quite simple. Gently dab these rolls with a touch more coconut oil, some milk going on top as well. This is going to give it a golden color. Sesame seeds, sprinkle that over, cover this again with a damp cloth and leave it aside to prove I'd say about another half an hour to 45 minutes. I'm waiting for the coconut dough to double in size and while that's proving, I'm starting with the banana fritters. First, I'm making a coconut caramel sauce. Pour that coconut milk into the pan. This needs to simmer for about 10 minutes. To this, some sugar, salt, and a generous glug of honey looks absolutely beautiful. You know this is going to be delicious. Stir that around. 
this needs to simmer for about 10 minutes. You need to dissolve the sugar before you bring the coconut milk up to the boil. You can see the color starts to change. It's going a light caramel in color. Butter is sometimes used in a caramel sauce. I'm using coconut oil. Once the oil heats up, it releases a lovely coconut flavor. While I'm waiting for this, let's make the batter for the fritters. For that, self-raising flour in a mixing bowl. To that, some coconut, using desiccated coconut, sugar, rice flour, this adds a lovely crunch, and cold water. Use a whisk and mix those ingredients together. We're going to fry the banana fritters just before serving the best way to enjoy them. Have a look at the sauce. You have to be quite careful when you work with this. The splashes can give you quite a burn. Leave the coconut caramel sauce to simmer. And while that's on the go, onto the Sri Lankan chicken. For the Sri Lankan chicken, a real quick and easy recipe. It has to be one of the quickest chicken curries you can make. Sunflower oil into the pan. Preheated this pan already. In goes some onions. To this, lime leaves. Season the onions with salt to the hot oil. Add some curry leaves. Saute those for a bit, just until they're fragrant. Add some ginger and garlic paste. Stir that around. And once it's fragrant, some red chili powder. I think I need a tablespoon and a half. Heat the chili for a few seconds and now add some sliced chicken breast fillet. Everything's starting to come together. You need to multitask a bit. Stir frying the chicken and keeping an eye on that coconut caramel sauce. Let's have a look. It's bubbling up, it's quite thick. Still needs to deepen in color though. Back to the chicken. The meat sealed on the outside. Remember to cook this on a high heat. We seal the chicken and we trap in all the moisture. Next, the roasted spices. Ground cumin, ground coriander, garam masala, and some turmeric. Stir that around and don't worry if it starts to stick. Use a wooden spoon and scrape the pan. The secret to making a delicious Sri Lankan curry is to not add water. Add tomatoes to the pan. And the tomato actually gives the chicken a bit of moisture. Press down. It forms a sauce that coats the chicken pieces. Add 400 ml of good quality coconut milk. This is going to give the curry a silky, velvety sauce. Add the coconut milk just before serving. If you add the coconut milk too soon, the sauce thickens too much and almost disappears. Leave the chicken to simmer in the coconut sauce for about two minutes and then switch off the heat. The bread should be ready, let's have a look. Remove the damp cloth. It looks beautiful, it's puffed up as well. Still quite spongy. Bake this off in a preheated oven, 180 degrees Celsius, for about 30 to 35 minutes. Have a look at that caramel sauce. Wow, the sauce is ready. The caramel's deep in color. Move that aside. I've got a pan here with some sunflower oil and this is to fry the fritters. I've got four bananas here. Make sure they're not too ripe. Peel the bananas. I'm not using too much sugar in the banana fritter batter. It's because the bananas are quite sweet. They're also easier to work with if they're quite firm. Final ingredient going into the batter, some melted butter. I've heated the butter slightly and now slice the bananas in half. I always do this just before frying so the bananas don't discolor. Quite gently taking care not to break it. Pop the bananas into the batter. I think I'm just going to do two at first and once those are in the pan, I'm going to do the next two. Be very, very gentle. And now let's test the oil. I'd say that's going to be ready in about a minute. The batter's turned golden brown, leave it aside. Gently lift the bananas out the bowl and pop that into the hot oil. Make sure it's covered nicely. And let's turn the first one over. And there we have it, the perfect fritter. Make sure they don't touch in the pan or they will stick together. You can see the first ones are starting to turn deep golden brown. Just remove them from the oil. You can serve this with vanilla ice cream and with that caramel sauce as well.
don't place the fritters on paper towel. That makes them quite soggy. Straight onto a plate. This is the last fritter. These are best served piping hot. Let's get ready to serve the feast. The bread's out the oven, it's still warm. It should sound quite hollow when it's tapped. It's deep golden in color. To finish up on the bread, brush it with some coconut oil. Let's have a look at the texture of the bread. You can see it's really, really light, quite an airy bread, still quite warm. You break it open. I can see some of the spring onion and that flavor coming through. For the fritters, pour the caramel sauce over. These are some of my Sri Lankan inspired recipes. What started with a travel disaster ended with a food adventure. I learned to make delicious Sri Lankan style chicken curry with coconut, lime and curry leaves and Indian spices to go with that coconut bread and for dessert banana fritters with a coconut caramel sauce. There's so much more to Sri Lankan food than just curry and rice. I hope you give these recipes a try.